Today on Good Morning Maine, new details on an argument in Madison that police say led to murder. Plus how a lack of public restrooms in downtown Bangor is causing concerns around the city. And the state of Maine is preparing to auction off a mountain of unclaimed property, including some real treasure. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us. I want some of that treasure. They're talking about silver bars and all kinds I of stuff. I love the vague term so, treasure. Yeah. It implies that we're kind of pirating and yeah. I, I like that. Well, I think they have jewelry, all kinds of stuff like cool. unclaimed, so, um, what are they, the safety deposit boxes and right. things like that. It could be so, anything. Yeah, it could be yours too. So right. We'll have that story for you coming up along with all the day's news. But first, to check of the forecast, looks like another beautiful sunny day out there today. Highs in the upper 80s. Boy, it was pretty sticky yesterday. Today, you might notice the air quality is down a little bit, too, because of the uh, wildfires burning in Alberta, Canada, causing some problems here. They haven't issued an air quality alert, but they are telling people with respiratory issues, things like that, to take it easy today. Mm, I definitely noticed that yesterday. I didn't think it was solely humidity yeah. in the sky that made it look that hazy. Yeah, the air's just kind of thick. Yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, I feel it. Yeah. Okay, here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Wednesday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes. Need the proper fit or experiencing foot pain? Visit us across from Irving and Newport. Alrighty, areas have been fog developing in a few spots this morning, especially in the northern parts of the state. We're noticing a little bit of it across our southern counties as well, but most of it's staying off for the north for the time being. So if you're traveling this morning, keep that in mind. Some areas of dense fog may make it hard to see from time to time. Otherwise, though, not a whole lot of cloud cover at all across the sky, so that means this fog will burn off courtesy of some sunshine that will begin to help things out. Futurecast moving forward for today, showing a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds during the afternoon period, but overall we're looking pretty good with just a few passing clouds on the way later on tonight. The wind's not too bad either, roughly at around 5 miles per hour, maybe up to 10 miles per hour out of the north in general. We'll see that calming down later on tonight and looking rather calm for the daytime tomorrow. The hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, showing a lot of sunshine, temperatures in the 80s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. A very close call for a motorist driving on the main turnpike in Gray. A 21-year-old woman from New Hampshire was traveling south around 1020 Tuesday morning when this happened. A vehicle traveling in front of her kicked up a piece of metal road debris, sending it into the air. The sharp metal ended up striking the windshield of her Jeep Wrangler where it became impaled just inches from her face. The driver was able to safely pull over and received minor injuries. She was checked by paramedics at the scene before being reunited with her family. Boy, well, in other news, the man charged with murder in connection with the death in Madison made his initial court appearance yesterday following his arrest last week. 61-year-old Roland Flood of Madison was arrested Friday. The body of 57-year-old Mark Tribu of Anson was found inside his vehicle at a cemetery on East Houghton Street in Madison in July. The Office of the Medical Examiner ruled his death a homicide. Maine State Police spokesperson Shannon Moss said Flood had lived with Tribu and Anson shortly before Tribu was killed. Court records indicate there was an alleged argument between Tribu and Flood when Flood was asked to move out. According to court records, Flood admitted to threatening to kill Tribu, but he told police it was just a joke. Flood is now being held at the Somerset County Jail without bail. Toman Caudill made his first court appearance in Penobscot County Court virtually in connection with a shooting incident at Rangeley Place in Capehart over the weekend. The defendant was arrested on Sunday and currently faces gun possession and drug charges. The gun possession charges are felony charges and if found guilty he could face five years in prison and a $5,000 fine. The drug charge could result in a one-year sentence and a $2,000 fine. The judge on the case set bail at $5,000 cash with numerous conditions, including no contact with named individuals and no use or possession of deadly weapons. A man accused of refusing to stop his vehicle near the Canadian border after indicating he had a bomb was in Aroostook County Court on Tuesday. The charges against 42-year-old Tony Holford were read through by a judge. His indictment consists of six counts, including criminal threatening with a dangerous weapon and terrorizing with a dangerous weapon, as well as other charges. He pleaded not guilty on all counts and is slated to be back in court on October 17th. Bill had previously been set at $1,000 cash, but Holford indicated he would not be able to make it. Holford and his attorney indicated they may be asking for a bail reduction. 
The Kennebec County Grand Jury has indicted a Massachusetts man for attempted murder. According to Waterville Police Chief William Bonney, officers arrested 34-year-old Irenu Goncalves after they found him strangling a woman behind a hotel on Main Street in June. The woman also appeared to be beaten and was taken to the hospital to be treated for her injuries. Bonney said Goncalves resisted arrest and an officer suffered minor injuries trying to subdue him. The grand jury also indicted Goncalves on numerous other charges, including aggravated assault, domestic violence terrorizing, assault on an officer, and criminal threatening. The grand jury also indicted a 39-year-old Atkins Atkinson man for manslaughter. Police say Bradford Enos was driving on I-395 in Waterville when he hit 59-year-old Michelle Demchak of Madison. Demchak had stopped her car to help the driver of another car that had crashed into the bridge barrier. She died at the scene. Finally, the grand jury handed up a superseding indictment for former president or former Kennebec County Sheriff's Deputy Daniel Ross. He was arrested in August of last year. A Maine State Police spokesperson said they received a report about ongoing domestic violence incidents at a home in West Gardner. The 29-year-old was indicted on 16 counts, including domestic violence assault, unlawful sexual contact, and domestic violence threatening with a dangerous weapon. Well, RSU 3 Superintendent Charles Brown has resigned from his position just days into the school year. The resignation was confirmed by RSU 3 Board of Directors Chairwoman Eleanor Hess. In a statement sent by Hess to RSU 3 community members, she says Brown resigned on August 31st. It goes on to say that Lisa Rue has since been appointed as part-time interim assistant superintendent. Brown had been with the school district for six years, serving as a principal before becoming superintendent four years ago. We spoke to the current principal of Mount View Elementary School, Alicia McCormick, who reached out to Brown on our behalf, but we haven't heard anything back. The RSU Board of Directors is now seeking an interim superintendent and hopes to have a full-time super by July of 2024. The lack of public restrooms open 24-7 in Bangor leaves many members of the homeless population with limited options. However, one of the most popular public restrooms is being heavily misused. Our Grace Blanchard explains. The limited amount of public restrooms in the Bangor area is raising some concerns, especially for the homeless population. We did try porta potties for a while to make those accessible, but um, there were some significant behavior issues that contributed to them having to be removed. The city manager says it became too difficult to maintain the portable restrooms. This led to the council implementing a park ranger program. So it is one full-time person and two part-time persons that will move throughout all of our public spaces uh, to make sure that um, the public spaces are in the shape that they should be to greet our residents and visitors. According to the city manager, Bangor City Council is looking to implement more public restrooms in the Bangor area. However, the issue lies on whether or not they'll be open 24-7. We're not open 24-7, so that means that we're not the solution to public restrooms uh, for all hours of the day. The Bangor Public Library is a prime location for public restroom use, which has led to some serious challenges for the library. Always tried to keep an eye on what's happening with the restrooms, and we've had to make a number of changes. In this year alone, police have issued 11 criminal trespass warnings to individuals misusing the public library restrooms for substance use. According to the library's director, there have been several more incidents that have even led to overdoses. We definitely deal with that. Um, the way we've responded is by having our maintenance staff check the restrooms every 15 minutes. And that's a, a huge uh, effort. Uh, and the library expects these incidents to increase into the colder months. We're still probably going to experience a lot of this as long as uh, there's a large group of people who are not housed and as long as uh, there are a limited number of places that people can be uh, during the winter. According to the city manager, they are working closely with the library in regards to these concerns. The city actually awarded some ARPA funds to ensure that they had a social worker in place because we know that a number of individuals who are struggling maybe need access to service. Lori says the City Council does plan to address this issue later this month. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, meanwhile, Bangor City Hall is preparing for some major renovations that will force them to temporarily relocate. According to Bangor City Manager Debbie Laurie, the city put out a referendum a few years ago to redesign the whole first floor of City Hall. 
She says the goal is to create a layout that is more convenient and accessible to the public. However, the renovations will mean the staff must relocate once construction begins sometime later this year. Some of our waiting areas, depending on the office and the time of year it is, there can be lengthy lines, the waiting areas are not all that conducive for people to wait. We've identified a particular location that we're working through, so um, it would still be accessible to the public. According to Laurie, they are not disclosing that temporary location while negotiations are still ongoing, but she did say they hope to remain in the downtown area to make it convenient for staff and the public. It's unclear at this time when those renovations will begin or how long they'll take, but the City Council will be discussing the relocation plans and renovations at a meeting later on today. Hmm. So we'll keep you updated on that. Interesting, yeah. yeah. The waiting is kind of an issue in that building. If you yeah. ever had to register your car on kind of a busy day, it's a bummer. Yeah, it's all kind of spread out too, you know. Right. This way maybe it will consolidate everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah good point. Yeah. All right, the time now is 6 11. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, from priceless jewelry to a silver bar, the state of Maine is hoping to reunite Mainers with their unclaimed property. We'll have the details on the upcoming option. But first, another check for your weather forecast. A nice summery day today, mostly sunny with highs up near 86 degrees, mostly clear overnight with lows dropping down to the mid 60s. Tomorrow, not a bad day either, partly cloudy with highs near 87. Living in Maine means long cold winters and hot humid summers. Whatever the weather, Bangor Heat Pumps is your solution. Open 24-7, Bangor Heat Pumps takes care of you at home or at work. We operate statewide and service all brands and models. Understanding moving can be stressful, we will help move any units you may have. We offer a veterans discount in our home with a capeless hero discount. Visit us online at bangorheatpumpsllc.com or call or text us at 307-7746. Bangor Heat Pumps. Hammond Lumber has earned a level of trust with generations of contractors, do-it-yourselfers, and homeowners. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. When the acres add up, so does the work. The Kubota LO2 Series is ready for it. Part of the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience, it features powerful, dependable Kubota diesel engines performance match detachments and the versatility to get the job done right available at doors equipment 1468 outer hammond street bangor it's the all-new game show is this thing a quadruped i don't even know what that means <laughs> that has everybody guessing will smith yes you are on a roll person place or thing magpie yes! premiere september 11th coming weekdays at 10 on abc7 the state of Maine will auction off nearly two decades worth of unclaimed property and some of it may just be yours. Our Devin Dagnall stopped by to get a peek at some of the treasures and the treasurer's office is planning to put up for sale. There are um, items like jewelry or silver bars, but it's, it's anything that someone might put in, in a uh, safe deposit box and that could be anything if you use your imagination. Later this month, the state treasurer's office will hold an auction for much of the tangible unclaimed property in its possession. Most of the items were at one point in safety deposit boxes, but they were turned over to the state due to lack of activity from the account holder. The state has been holding on to some of these items for nearly three decades, while others have only been around for a handful of years. At some point, we got to a stage where there's just too much volume here. And so we need to do something. So that's where we started a bidding process. According to State Treasurer Henry Beck, the state hasn't held an auction like this for nearly 20 years. We don't do these auctions typically. We're only doing it now because we're at capacity for space. And we want to get the word out first uh, by talking to you and your viewers, by running ads in the newspaper. Anyone who will listen, we want them to know about this auction and to claim the items first. Even though the treasurer's office staff has already spent countless hours trying to contact the rightful owners of the items, assistant director of the treasurer's office, Jeff Chikowskis, says people can still claim their property right up until the sale is finalized at auction. So the property could be at the auctioneer's, and if we tell the auctioneer, hey, we found the owner for this, they will remove that a lot from the, the bidding and, and return those properties back to us. If the items are not claimed, the funds yielded from the sale at auction will be held for the original or rightful owner to claim. 
To check if you have any unclaimed property, search your name on mainunclaimedproperty.gov. In Augusta, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The Maine Maritime Academy soccer team recently made a trip down to York to help remember a friend and teammate who died last year. Brian Keneally was a York High School graduate and midfielder for the MMA Mariners. He was among the four Maine Maritime Academy students killed in a car crash in December of 2022 in Castine. He was just 20 years old. This picture was posted by Wild Willie's Burgers in York. They say the team stopped by while in the area for a memorial dedication honoring their classmate. Willie's added it was the largest order that they've ever received. According to a Maine Maritime Academy spokesperson, the team participated in a ceremony at York High School where his jersey was dedicated and a scholarship in his name was announced. The Endangered Species Act is officially 50 years old this year. The act was signed into law by President Nixon on December 28th of 1973. According to the Environmental Defense Fund, former President Nixon signed it into law after it passed unanimously in the United States Senate and by a vote of 355 to 4 in the House of Representatives. The Endangered Species Act helps protect dwindling species and habitats, and according to the Maine Audubon Society, it has prevented the extinction of 99% of the species it protects. Maine Audubon Society policy advocate Francesca Gundrum highlights some Maine animals on this list and the importance of preserving them. We have 12 uh, federally endangered and threatened species within Maine borders, and just to name a few, uh, Canada lynx, uh, rusty patched bumblebee, which also just got added to the Maine Endangered Species Act list, and roseate tern um, is another one. Mainers really do care about our vulnerable um, species. There are currently 940 plants and more than 740 animals in the U.S. alone that are currently identified as endangered. Yeah. Really important act there. Saved yeah. a lot of work. All right, the time now is 6.17. After the break, we'll hear about which businesses that plan to stay open while many seasonal ones are soon to close up shop. That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. In the beautiful town of Belfast, you'll discover a world of alpaca, the blue alpaca. At our ranch location, you can interact with these amazing animals and enjoy the beautiful Maine outdoors with your very own alpaca walk. Visit our website to book your alpaca walk and experience all the joy and beauty that comes with it. Shop at our downtown Belfast location or online and take advantage of our free nationwide shipping. You'll be ready for a comfortable, fashionable, and fun summer. The blue alpaca, feel the difference. When outdoors, some people like it hot and some people like it cold. However, when indoors, most people like it comfortably warm. Choose a Baderas boiler from McCusick Petroleum Company to provide you with comfortable and efficient heat. They also offer sales and service on many brands of furnaces, boilers, and water heaters. McCusick Petroleum Company delivers oil and LP gas to homes and businesses throughout the Penquist region. If you'd like more information on pricing or service, call or stop by our office in Dover Foxcroft. People ask me all the time, does Lowry & Associates really get all of those clients, all of those big settlements? Yes, we do. And you know what else is true? I really am standing on top of this big truck. And now, an announcement from America's number one most watched morning show. We've got a million good reasons for you to watch GMA this September. Someone somewhere in America is about to get a million dollars live on GMA. Hi, see how I did that? A million good reasons? <laughs> Welcome back everyone with Labor Day behind us now. Some places begin closing down until next year, but in Belfast, this is not the case. And folks there want everyone to know that they are open for business. Doug Banks has more. There actually was a flip of a coin to decide whether Belfast would be called Belfast or New Londonderry. With the flip of a coin, this city of 7,000 people became Belfast. A common misconception among many towns and cities like Belfast is that they're a tourist town, only serving those who visit during the summer. But the people here want everyone to know this is not the case. Our businesses don't close down. They might take a week or two off because everybody's entitled to that and they should take that so for their own sanity. But for the most part, they're staying open. 
Home to over a dozen year-round restaurants, Belfast prides themselves on cultivating a strong community. I think community, a whole like community circle thing, they kept businesses going. Even in the face of adversity. You face a wall and then you figure out what to do. And I think COVID kind of said, you can't do anything. And then people kind of had to take a deep breath and say, yes, we can. And that changed the beauty, like it added to the beauty of Belfast. Local businesses and residents rallied when everyone was divided, even going as far as making a conscious choice to stop by each restaurant and ordering takeout throughout the week. So that everybody was successful and were able to keep their staff employed and be able to, to come out on the other side of COVID functioning and here. Stories like this and many more speak to Belfast's unofficial motto. When there are high tides, every boat rises. It's not a competition. It's about celebrating everything that, that is here and, again, making everyone successful. In Belfast, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Nice to see things are going great in Belfast these days. Boy, they really have cleaned up the city over over the recent decades and businesses thriving. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's one of the places I go to for Christmas yeah. shopping. Yeah. I love yeah. a, a treat myself day consists mm -hmm. of walking around Belfast. Yeah. Just in that downtown area, it's so dense with good food options, shopping and things to do. It's very nicely balanced. That's what I was going to mention. A lot of restaurants there too. Really good food. Fantastic. Go down on the waterfront, have a nice meal or Fine something. Fine dining so. or pub food. Yeah. There's options for both. Yeah. Love it. Great day to go to Belfast today. I would love to. <laughs> I would love to if I didn't have prior commitments. But yeah, but yeah let's check in with Devin um, to get that forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes. Need the proper fit or experiencing foot pain? Visit us across from Irving and Newport. As we get into things this morning, areas have been fog developing out there, mainly across the northern parts of the state. We're noticing a little bit across our southern counties as well. But, of course, this will start to back off as, as we get some sunshine going today. We'll see a lot of that today, so this fog will not be very long-lasting. The radar and Sally not showing any clouds overhead this morning, so we're looking pretty good at that department. The only clouds nearby is courtesy of the leftover from Vidalia located right about in here. That is causing some uh, high surface well and some clouds to develop there. But meanwhile, we're watching some activity across the Midwestern states right now with showers and storms developing. We'll have our turn for some chances for showers and storms later on in the week. But for now, wave heights are active. No small craft advisories are posted at this time. But wave heights are right around three to four feet according to the buoys out there. Notice they are higher farther out towards sea where you see a little bit of that green showing up which indicates some higher surf in that regard. So future cast moving forward for today showing a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds during the afternoon period. We will stay dry today, maybe a few passing clouds again later on tonight with areas have been fog on the way yet again. Once we head towards Thursday, though, some clouds and sunshine mixed in. Slight chance for an afternoon shower or storm can not be ruled out. We'll have chances for showers and thunderstorms moving in as we head towards Thursday night. And the parts of Friday, pretty much daily chances for showers and thunderstorms starting Thursday night into Friday and lasting through the weekend. Average high temperature is 75 degrees. Look how warm we're getting. We're going to get into the 80s for the next few days. Middle to upper 80s Wednesday into Thursday and also into Friday. Lower 80s Saturday. Back in the 70s again Sunday, Monday, and also into your two. Tuesday, so it's a cool down on the way. Dew points, those are up there just a bit as well. 60s and even some 70s for dew points on the way the next several days, or at least the next several days of foreseeable future, though, it will continue to remain humid. So your forecast for today, mid-80s with lots of sunshine and that north wind getting up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour. By tonight, mid-60s, mostly clear areas have been fog on the way with the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tomorrow, upper 80s, partly cloudy, maybe an isolated thunderstorm possible. South wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Your comfort shoes extended forecast. So here we go. Lots of a chance for showers and thunderstorms actually Friday, Saturday, and also into Sunday. We'll have temperatures in the mid 80s Friday, lower 80s Saturday, and mid 70s as we head towards your Sunday. Ladies, a main adventure. If you like food and snacks as much as my buddy Adam does, you better get to Rennie's. That's right, and baking season is coming up, so get the Rennie's to stock up. Thank you for shopping Rennie's. Whether you're hurt by a landscaping truck like this, a work van like this, or any commercial vehicle, we know how to get you the big money you may deserve. Hurt by a commercial vehicle? Call the twos. We win for you. What can your John Deere compact tractor do? Attachments for any job. 
financing that's as easy as... Like getting a library card. Affordable. You're going to get this bigger tractor, and it's going to be less money. Dependable. Through the rain, through the snow, I'll work through it all. Comfortable. And I haven't any idea how we survive without it. Experience United and build a tractor package customized for you. I ran the consumer-owned utility on Swans Island, and it was a failed experiment for our community. That's why I'm so concerned about question three. It will be a massive $13.5 billion gamble that puts politicians in control of our power. It will lead to higher energy bills, and they're not even required to have an operations plan when they take over. Mainers can't afford this costly proposal. Please vote no on question three. Everybody that home runs huh? Hey, pass me the keys, Rob. I haven't had anything to drink. Good idea. We've learned to speak up to prevent drinking and driving. Now let's speak up to prevent texting and driving. What are you doing, Mommy? Here, let me do that for you. <gasps> so sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. Speak up. Lives depend on it. Don't drive intoxicated. Don't drive intoxicated. A sobering message from AAA. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. So mad. Former Proud Boys <laughs> National Chairman Enrique Tario now sentenced to more than two decades behind bars in the longest sentence imposed thus far in connection with the January, January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. In court, Tario pleaded for leniency, calling January 6th a national embarrassment, though never taking responsibility. ABC's M. Wynn has more from Washington. This morning, former Proud Boys leader Enrique Tario going to prison for 22 years after orchestrating his far-right extremist group's attack on the Capitol in a failed bid to thwart the transfer of power after Donald Trump lost the 2020 presidential election. It's the harshest sentence handed down among any of the more than 1,100 individuals charged so far in connection to January 6th. Prosecutors had asked for 33 years. That they're getting pretty high sentences, I think sends a huge signal about the importance of uh, vindicating the harm that was caused on January 6th. Tario was not present at the riot, but prosecutors still say he played a key role, arguing Tario watched the violence unfold at 2.38 p.m. posting on social media, don't expletive leave. This now infamous video showing Tario meeting with Oath Keepers leader Stuart Rose and others in an underground D.C. parking garage on the eve of the riot. Rhodes now serving 18 years behind bars. Tario's sentencing comes days after those of other former Proud Boys members who were also convicted of seditious conspiracy. Ethan Nordine received 18 years, Joseph Biggs 17 years and Zachary Rail 15 years. There'll be a day and a time where an appeal will come, and we expect that the appeal to come soon. This as the Justice Department prepares to put former President Trump on trial at the same courthouse in Washington on charges that he illegally schemed to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. Trump's federal election interference case is set for March 4th, 2024, despite his attorney's efforts to push it back until after the presidential election. It'll come one day before Super Tuesday. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Well, meanwhile, a new wave of COVID infections hitting home from the classroom to the White House. President Biden masked up in public for the first time in months after the first lady tested positive for the virus. But it didn't take long for him to ditch the mask during a Medal of Honor ceremony, despite an uptick of infections and hospitalizations. Here's ABC's Rhiannon Alley with more. This morning, a rising number of COVID cases sparking new concern, just as students fill classrooms across the country. New York State is sending schools COVID tests and masks, and districts in Kentucky and Texas have briefly suspended in-person classes after a surge in cases. It's tough to say COVID is back when in reality, it never really left. We're just much better prepared to deal with it. COVID hospitalizations nationwide have increased more than 15% in one week. Still, hospitalizations are only about half of what they were this time last year. A new booster shot, which is expected to protect against severe disease and death from a new variant, could be available soon. The FDA is expected to approve the booster within the next week, and the CDC is expected to soon follow. 
But I think it's important for people to start viewing this almost like we view the influenza vaccine, where it's going to be tailored every fall to the best of scientists' ability to capture the dominating circulating strain. Doctors are also warning, don't throw out expired at-home testing kits because the FDA has extended when certain brands expire. The agency has posted a list of new expiration dates on its website. Meanwhile, some healthcare facilities in New York and California have now reinstated mask mandates as a precaution. President Biden showed up to a Medal of Honor ceremony wearing a mask yesterday, one day after the first lady tested positive. But he removed the mask while giving an award to an 81-year-old veteran. The White House says Biden has tested negative. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Well, doctors say right now the latest COVID variant appears to be more or no more dangerous than the previous strains. The Massachusetts State Police and FBI are investigating following reports of a camera in an airplane bathroom. Fox's Litsa Papas has more on that story. We spoke with a first class passenger on that flight who showed us his boarding pass from Charlotte to Logan Airport here in Boston. He says he witnessed some of this incident that's now being investigated by state police and the FBI. Mass State Police and the FBI are investigating a potential criminal act on board American Airlines Flight 1441 from Charlotte to Boston Saturday. A first class passenger on that flight who wants to remain anonymous tells us he saw a male flight attendant stopping a teenage girl from using the bathroom mid flight. She was about to go to the bathroom. He stopped her and said, hey, hold on just a second. We're, I'm, we're about to start collecting trash, so I'm going to wash my hands. So he went in the bathroom. And then she went to the bathroom. This passenger says shortly after the girl used the bathroom, he noticed her mother come up to stop someone else from going in. There was a passenger going to the bathroom. The mom stopped that passenger from going to the bathroom, said, wait, don't go in there. And then after the mom went back, I asked that person that she stopped. And that was who told me it was the camera in the bathroom. When the flight landed at Logan Airport, this passenger says they were met by state police and a few people checked the bathroom. He says the girl and her family were the first to get off the plane with police and then officers escorted that male flight attendant off as well. After like three or four different people had checked the bathroom and everything, they took the male flight attendant off. A spokesperson with American Airlines confirms police responded to this flight after its arrival in Boston and went on to say, we take this matter very seriously and are fully cooperating with law enforcement in their investigation as safety and security are our highest priorities. We reached out to the FBI office in Boston as well as Mass State Police several times today and so far they have not been able to confirm whether this investigation involves a camera inside the bathroom. Police have also not said whether any arrests have been made. Outside Logan Airport, I'm Lisa Pappas for your local station, Boston 25 News. Well, travelers experienced major delays on Amtrak Tuesday. Amtrak trains traveling between Boston and New Haven, Connecticut were temporarily suspended due to downed trees on the tracks. Footage of the train station in Providence, Rhode Island shows riders stranded there waiting for service to pick up again. As of last night, Amtrak was reporting train service in the Northeast Corridor to be up to two hours late for certain rides. Oh. That's crazy. I was just there last week and yeah. it was a small MBTA station. Mm. Yeah, it's a Isn't bummer. There? Yep. All right. Well, calling de all decades old Bangor locals. Did you ever shop at the Freeze's department store in downtown Bangor? A woman living in Idaho lost her father to illness this past week and is now tasked with selling some of his belongings, one of which is an old Freeze's door handle. We'll have that story and more when Good Morning Maine rolls along. Want to improve or upgrade your home? Well, at home furniture appliance and bedding in Lincoln and Dover Foxcroft has got you covered. 
We pride ourselves in the relationships we build with every customer from commercial businesses to homeowners. We have some of the best prices on the best brands of appliances, furniture, and mattresses, and we even offer full kitchen and bath remodels with the designer and installers on staff. So stop in today and check us out at one of our locations and see what we can do to make you feel at home. With AAA Insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA Auto Insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA Insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Wednesday, September 6th, 2023. It's also National Read-A-Book Day. This special day encourages us to unplug and spend a little time in silence, turning the pages of a good book. 80% of us don't feel we spend as much time reading as we would like, so this holiday is the perfect opportunity to kick back and turn a few pages, or perhaps a few swipes. Almost 20% of books consumed today are now read with electronic platforms. I love that that is the holiday today yeah. because I've kind of been kicking myself that I haven't given myself more time for that type of mental stimulation. Yeah, you don't regret it either when you just, no. it's very peaceful and yeah. you kind of escape to a different world. Yeah. I do it more, I tend to do it more in the winter. Uh, right. Reading. My dad, I think he read like 125 books last year or something wow. like that. So he's always reading a novel or, or something yeah. like that. It's so good. I mean, I think it's mm -hmm. good for keeping your cognitive function up and sure. just learning new words and just, it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. go read a book today if you have a chance. Yeah. On this day in history, back in 1901, President William McKinley was shot by an assassin at the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York, and died eight days later. Hmm. In 1909, American explorer Robert Perry sent a telegram from Labrador announcing he had reached the North Pole five months earlier. Imagine li living in that time. Nowadays, we'll just tweet it. Yeah, I'm here. You do a little Facebook Live. I'm here. We'll show. Here, he had to wait five months <laughs> to let everybody know. Facebook Live where you can't really even hear all the words because right, it's right. kind of spotty connection, yeah, but still at least, it works. At least you see it there, yeah. you know. <laughs> yes. So anyway, he's like, I can't wait to tell. Right. All right. And in 1995, Baltimore Orioles shortstop Cal Ripken Jr. played his 2,131st consecutive game, breaking a record set by Lou Gehrig back in 1939. He ended up voluntarily ending his streak at 2,362 <laughs> games in 1998. They probably said, okay, Cal, that's enough that's games. That's enough. You need to take a day off. And I want to know, know what his good luck charm was, and how can I get one of those? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah baseball players Quite a player, and superstitions. Though. That's crazy. All right, in 1997, billions watched from around the world as a funeral was held for Britain's Princess Diana. And today's birthdays include comedian Jeff Foxworthy. He's 65 today. Rocker Roger Waters from Pink Floyd is 80. And actor Idris Elba turns 51 today. I love Idris. I'm really getting into some of his movies lately. I watched a recent one called Beast on Netflix. Where, I saw that in theaters. Yeah, yeah, some ravenous lions terrorizing everybody and his family and stuff. Well, but, it's because they're being poached. Well, there's that, but he, mm. he's just a really good actor. I, right, I like right, what he was doing. Right. It, so. I wish he yeah. got cast as the new Bond. There was he some. He'd make a great Bond. I think yeah. he would make a great Bond, yeah. but I don't. I think that was he was decided not to be. Hmm. I think we're just starting to see what he can do, though. So yeah. we'll see what he can do in the future. Yeah, true. Yeah. All right. Well, um, now let's check in with Devin Biggs. It's going to be another hot one, kind of mm -hmm. hazy. We're seeing some of that wildfire smoke all the way from Alberta. Alberta, Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. 
And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Wednesday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes. Need the proper fit or experiencing foot pain? Visit us across from Irving and Newport. Already areas have been falling developing in a few spots this morning, especially in the northern parts of the state. We're noticing a little bit of it across our southern counties as well, but most of it's staying off for the north for the time being. So if you're traveling this morning, keep that in mind. Some areas of dense fog may make it hard to see from time to time. Otherwise, though, not a whole lot of cloud cover at all across the sky. So that means this fog will burn off courtesy of some sunshine that will begin to help things out. Futurecast moving forward for today, showing a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds during the afternoon period. But overall, we're looking pretty good with just a few passing clouds on the way later on tonight. The wind's not too bad either, roughly at around 5 miles per hour, maybe up to 10 miles per hour out of the north in general. We'll see that calming down later on tonight and looking rather calm for the daytime tomorrow. Your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, showing a lot of sunshine, temperatures in the 80s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Thank right, you, Devin. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sure you've heard the old adage, one man's trash is another's treasure. Well, Roger Muir collected a pretty great piece of trash, and his daughter Amy and her brothers wants to know if anyone wants it. Muir was a master plumber that worked on many large commercial plumbing jobs around Bangor before starting his own company in Eastport. According to his daughter, Amy, one of the trophies he had kept over the years was this door handle that was from a job he did at Freese's department store in downtown Bangor. Muir had told Amy that the door push was just in a trash pile, so he decided to take it as a memento. A memento, excuse me. Roger died last week after a long illness, so now Amy and her brothers are tasked with sifting through his belongings. I had seen it a few months ago. My dad had been living with me for the past four years, and I said, why do you have the freezes door push? And he goes, he's like, I worked on the conversion project. Amy decided that maybe there was someone out there that might like a piece of this Bangor history. So she took it to a Bangor area Facebook group to see if there was interest. If you would like to own this door push from the original Freese's building, find Amy on Facebook and make an offer. Her name, as it appears on Facebook, is Amy C. Martin. For a reiteration of this information, head to foxbangor.com. A little piece of Bangor history right yeah. there. I know. I wish I could have been to Freese's. I've heard so much about it. It was huge, too. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, well, when we return after a quick ad break, Tyler Cruz will have the latest with local and national sports. Don't go away. You ready for French? Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Come on, are we going to miss it? Oh, does this hair look like it runs for buses? I bet that hair will run if I treat you to Mickey D's. Yeah, you're right. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a deal for everyone on the go at McDonald's. Get two fluffy, savory, melty sausage burritos for just $3. Or choose any two of these breakfast babes. A texting driver hit me and I had to stop working. I needed help, but the insurance company only offered me this tiny check. This tiny check won't even cover my medical bills. After a car accident, don't take a tiny check from the insurance company. Call the twos. I didn't take a tiny check. I called the twos and Lowry and Associates got me over $350,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you're hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call two, 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 22, 22. When it comes to fixing your car, you should have a choice. But out-of-state automakers are starting to restrict access to your car's mechanical data. That means local independent repair shops like mine. And mine, mine too, will lose their ability to diagnose problems and make repairs. Forcing you to expensive dealerships. Right to Repair will protect your choice. Your choice. It's your car. Get it fixed where you want. Please vote yes on question four. Yes on Right to Repair.
Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We are going to start out on the gridiron. Maine football looking to rebound off of a loss to FIU in their season opener. And as they prepare for North Dakota State, a lot of the talk surrounds freshman running back Tristan Keenan, who put up some numbers in his main debut and is looking to continue that success. Ryan Sudall has more. I've been doing my thing here in practice, but I wanted to show them how I get in the game situation. Like, I turned it on a lot more. Even though Maine football came up short of beating FIU Saturday, the team got a great glimpse at their future with the debut of freshman running back Tristan Keenan. All my boys, I just want them to eat, just to play the best that they can. So him going out there, having the game that he did is amazing. When he was going to be the starter going into the game. I mean, we kind of anticipated him having a productive day. But what they got was something they haven't seen in a while. Keenan scored Maine's only touchdown and ran for 108 yards, the most for a freshman black bear in five years. Playing at this type of level, is, it's kind of unreal. Like you got to let it sink in, watch the game highlights and stuff, and see yourself and hear the announcers calling your name. And it's definitely, it's definitely something that gives you chills. Keenan, a Baltimore native, got offers from schools like Akron and Marshall, but he chose Maine as he feels the location is best for his development on and off the field. The family environment and the isolation of Maine, out here I could lock in and just focus on football, class work, and getting better. You get a little homesick, but like the brotherhood out here is very strong. Since arriving, Keenan has impressed head coach Jordan Stevens and the whole team with how ahead of his years he is. How mature he is, how well he carries himself, how cool, how calm he is. I think he's unfazed by most things. Case in point, a fumble on just his third carry. He played the rest of the game like nothing happened, making a statement with his elusiveness and strength. He's one of the better backs I've had to go against. He's shifty, he's fast, he's not afraid to lower his shoulder and try to run through you. And out of a freshman, we really need that. Keenan will also be getting the start in their game Saturday against number two ranked North Dakota State. That's a huge jump up from his first outing, but he nor the Black Bears are afraid. I had a 100 yard game last week. I'm trying to get 200 this week. I want more touchdowns. We just got to get the dub. That's what I'm really looking forward to getting wins. So, weight on the chest brings the best out of us. In Orono, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. All right, thanks for that, Ryan. Certainly a big test for the Black Bears coming up this Saturday. Let's stay with some football now. Not a lot of time before the Patriots open the season against the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday, and it's going to be a big test for New England in week one. The Eagles are reigning NFC champs a year ago. They are real talented on both sides of the ball. Despite being underdogs, though, the Patriots are confident that they can pull off the week one upset. But according to new, new offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien, his unit is going to have a lot to deal with come Sunday. We have to know what the personnel is. They use different personnel groupings and, you know, schematically do different things out of different personnel groupings. So it's a very challenging uh, defense to go against, whether it's the front, the second level or the third level. And so we're, you know, we have a, a, a tough game ahead of us and we need to have a really good week of practice. All right, I've been counting the, down the days to Sunday for a long time. Let's go on to the high school sports scene now. We will go over to the soccer pitch in Newport. The Nokomis Warriors are playing host to the Mariners from Oceanside. A couple of minutes in, Elliot Trott brings it down for the Mariners. Nice finish with nice finish with the left foot. That rolls into the net. One to nothing Mariners. A few minutes later, Oceanside on the free kick. Great ball by Lucas Novica, but Dylan Souza punches that one out of the way for the save. Great play there midway through the first. Oceanside up. Trot chips it ahead to Harrison Garcia. He is all alone, and he takes care of business. He scores to extend that lead. And then with two to go in the half, Trot again to Garcia, and he will score his third goal of the half. Oceanside rolls in this one. They win 11-1. All right, over to Doyle Field now in Brewer, where the Witches are hosting Mount Ararat. First half, Eagles with it. It's Isla Godo over to Lexi Dupree. Some fancy footwork from the senior. She fires, but great work from Gabby Chase to come up with the save. Few minutes left here in the first half. Godo again with it. She finds Elena Willis, and the junior fires with the left, places it perfectly in the opposite corner of the net. That gives Mount A a 2 to nothing lead. At the half, they win it 4 nothing. Right, let's go to some other scores from around the area now. In some field hockey, Nokomis over Moore, 6 to nothing. That's Class B. MCI over Mount View, 8 to nothing in Class C. Class C girls soccer, Matanawcook beats Sumner, 5 to 1. And in Class B boys soccer, Ellsworth, 3 to 1 over John Beck. All right, that is all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break.
Hi, I'm Alice Seeger. Welcome to Belfast Fiber Arts. We provide hand-woven, hand-spun, knitted and quilted, upcycled clothes and art items for your home. We also feature weaving looms, spinning wheels and supplies. We are a weaving studio and a maker space with a sewing lab and a textile research library. We offer classes, workshops and study groups. So stop by and visit us at Belfast Fiber Arts. We're at 171 High Street in Belfast between the Colonial Theatre and the Beanbag Store. We look forward to seeing you. Hey, you are, Jim. Thank you, Baron. Have a good day. If the power went out here, it'd be devastating. But turning our electric grid over to the politicians behind question three, it would be a disaster. Why would we want a bunch of elected officials who take money from oil and gas companies in charge of Maine's electricity? And worse, question three will cost us $13.5 billion, which could mean higher taxes for all Mainers. Question three is a risk Mainers can't afford, ever. Eris Lumber is locally owned and has been serving the Penquist region for more than 50 years. See them for all your projects, big or small. Customer service is their number one priority. And with a full line of lumber and hardware items, they can also deliver to your job site. Harris Lumber, Milo. Goose River Farm and Meat Store is conveniently located on Route 3 across from Hammond Lumber in Belfast. They have a wide selection of meat and poultry, including beef, pork, lamb, chicken, duck, rabbit, and turkey. Buy your steak and meats for grilling this summer. Welcome back, everyone. Well, one more time this hour, we're going to check out that forecast. Yeah, here's Stephen Biggs. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes. Need the proper fit or experiencing foot pain? Visit us across from Irving and Newport. As we get into things this morning, areas have been fog developing out there, mainly across the northern parts of the state. We're noticing a little bit across our southern counties as well. But, of course, this will start to back off as, as we get some sunshine going today. We'll see a lot of that today, so this fog will not be very long-lasting. The radar on Sally not showing any clouds overhead this morning, so we're looking pretty good in that department. The only clouds nearby is courtesy of the leftover from Vidalia located right about in here. That is causing some uh, high surface well and some clouds to develop there. But meanwhile, we're watching some activity across the Midwestern states right now with showers and storms developing. We'll have our turn for some chances for showers and storms later on in the week. But for now, wave heights are active. No small craft advisories are posted at this time. But wave heights are right around three to four feet according to the buoys out there. Notice they are higher farther out towards sea where you see a little bit of that green showing up which indicates some higher surf and in that regard. So future cast moving forward for today showing a lot of sunshine. Maybe a few passing clouds during the afternoon period. We will stay dry today. Maybe a few passing clouds again later on tonight with areas that have been fog on the way yet again. Once we head towards Thursday, though, some clouds and sunshine mixed in. Slight chance for an afternoon shower or a storm cannot be ruled out. A lot of chances for showers and thunderstorms moving in as we head towards Thursday night. And the parts of Friday, pretty much daily chances for showers and thunderstorms starting Thursday night into Friday and lasting through the weekend. Average high temperature is 75 degrees. Look how warm we're getting. We're going to get into the 80s for the next few days. Middle to upper 80s Wednesday into Thursday and also into Friday. Lower 80s Saturday. Back in the 70s again Sunday, Monday, and also into your two. Tuesday, so it's a cool down on the way. Dew points, those are up there just a bit as well. 60s and even some 70s for dew points on the way the next several days, or at least the next several days of foreseeable future, though, it will continue to remain humid. So your forecast for today, mid-80s with lots of sunshine, and that north wind getting up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour. By tonight, mid-60s, mostly clear areas have been fog on the way, with the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tomorrow, upper 80s, partly cloudy, maybe an isolated thunderstorm possible. South wind at around five to ten miles per hour your comfort shoes extended forecast so here we go lots of a chance for showers and thunderstorms actually friday saturday and also into sunday we'll have temperatures in the mid 80s friday lower 80s saturday and mid 70s as we head towards your sunday in 18 years grant gill will become an improv legend that's why he's preparing for it now with health tips and wellness tools from aarp to help make sure his health lives as long as he does the younger you are, the more you need AARP. We were on the Christmas storm. We had just fixed two broken lines. We heard screaming coming from across the road. I was so scared that I was going to lose him. He's the apple of my eye. Nancy said that Kai was choking, and so I gave him a good hard hit in between his shoulder blades and saw something come out of his mouth, so I knew that was a good sign. If Dana wasn't here, I don't know what I'd done. He just showed up out of the blue, saved his life. 
Here at Rennie's, we've been a main staple for almost 75 years. We have a great selection of main items. Thank you for supporting our main local businesses. Wow, you guys got a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, when you're in Maine, you gotta shop local. Yeah, lots of great Maine stuff. I love it. Chips, we got Wilbur's of Maine, Mud Sauce, we got Ray's Mustard, Bloody Mary Mix, Can't Mix, we got it all. Why do you think we went to Rennie's? Rennie's, a main adventure. Stop waiting. Start living your life without knee or hip pain. Connect with a Northern Light orthopedist and get back out there. Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center. How are you? He posts his thirst traps in a leather-bound album. Florida wants to retire and move to him. He's Gary. And I'm your first Golden Bachelor. Welcome back, everyone. Well, the young bull moose rescued by wildlife officers in Colorado. The animal got caught in a hammock in Steamboat Springs. Colorado Parks and Wildlife officials say they tranquilized the male moose before carefully detangling it. When the moose woke up, it went on its way. Wildlife officials say this time of year, male moose start rubbing their newly formed antlers to shed the velvet. Anyone with unused volleyball nets, hammocks, or other <laughs> items animals can get caught on or asked to take them down. I, I didn't know that. Big problem there in Colorado. I guess so. Yeah. All right. Well, calling all dessert lovers. Me. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at me. <laughs> you could earn $600 by just watching a baking show. Rental company Big House Experience is looking for someone to watch the newest season of Great British Bake Off. Wow, okay, and just eat baked goods. Those two things together, amazing. Requirements include being a fan of the British show and loving sweets. The chosen applicant will also be expected to bake and test try various desserts, including scones, shortbread, and crumpets. Those interested can apply on the Big House Experience website by September 25th. Hmm. That's one of my favorite baking shows. Yeah, I love sweets too. Yeah, so that's huh? that's dangerous. Yeah, I love crumpets too. Do you like crumpets? I yeah. I've only got store bought versions. Yeah, me too. So I don't I yeah. don't think they're as good as they could be. I wish local bakeries had them. But I think I, they'd be easy to make too. Yeah, I'll give it a try. Kind of like a biscuit or an yeah. English muffin. Trader Joe's has them down there. So if I go those through are there, good. Yeah, yeah. Put a little raspberry jam on them. Yep. Yep, mm -hmm. And some butter too. Butter yeah. and jam. That's the secret sauce. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got a problem. I know. Me yeah. too. <laughs> okay. Uh, Good Morning America is next on ABC7. If you missed anything, head to foxbangor.com. And we'll keep delivering the news on Fox 22. If you're heading out for the day, though, we hope you have a great day.